Welcome back to the Love and Dubai show. Of course, today is International Women's Day and we're celebrating women. With us today is a woman who embodies strength, resilience and determination, a true inspiration, the youngest Arab and the first Saudi woman to climb Mount Everest. She was also the first Saudi woman to climb the Seven Summits. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I love, I love this. Gig. I love this. This is beautiful. What a big day to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for your time. Always. You know, I love you guys. Every time you, you, you want me, I'll be here. Yeah, maybe I can be a field like I can, you can you a can field reporter field reporter from Everest yes. from base camp anywhere. Yes, I've always wanted to be those. You know when you were a kid and you watched this someone's in like the storm and I'm here. Maybe I can be that. You know we hear so many stories of like people who uh, have climbed Everest and the things they've seen, the experiences they've oh, had. My it's God. just insane and so wild. But they have the most positive energy and just like <laughs> next level. Like how the, how the truth is. I try really, really hard to be positive as much as I can, but there are days where I'm like, not, because it's just life. But mountaineering has really beat out um, the negativity out of me in the sense of what you can control, you can control. What mm. you can't, you can't. That's it. When what is it that you can't control? So when you're stuck in the mountain and it's like day 20 and you're tired, hungry, and you smell like a six-month-old boot and you haven't had a decent <laughs> meal and you miss the sound of flesh, um, <laughs> truly, you do, you do, you miss the comforts of your home. Shut up. Yeah, pish pish. Uh, you can't control the weather. You can't control time. You can't control anything other than what's in you. So you really, really learn to go inwards and just, calm down and I'm a very hyper person so that was an amazing lesson for me it came in handy during the pandemic because I was having a hard time being stuck a little bit so it's really hard to master that but it, it's such a good life tool <laughs> only manage what you can mm-hmm. can we give people a little bit of an introduction a background to who sure, you are maybe what's sure. changed since we've last seen you absolutely so my name is Ram Harreg, Ram Harreg. I'm from Saudi Arabia uh, but kind of like Dubai-based. Um, and um, a few years ago, 10 years ago to be precise, I completely changed my life and I decided to be a mountaineer. I decided to go and explore the world. And during that journey, I climbed the seven summits. And one of them was at Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. And I finished every single continent, the highest peak in each continent. Wow. So it was an amazing, <laughs> amazing um, journey for me. And it's an amazing opportunity for me to Uh, to represent women of uh, women in general and then women of the region uh, specifically and then more niche Saudi women uh, doing such an incredible era for women. So of course. Yes, I'm very lucky. You're such a trailblazer. Thank you. I mean, like on International Women's Day, it's so significant, like the steps you've taken that do like for everyone wanting to follow in your footsteps. Yes. And plus you look amazing. Thank you. What a get up. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> I do this. <laughs> But out of all the summits, which one did you find the most challenging? Um... So there are tangible mountains and there are not tangible mountains. Tangible mountain, definitely, definitely Denali, the highest peak in uh, North America, because it was a zero assist. You carry 25 to 30 kilos on your back and mm-hmm. you walk for 12 hours or so. And it's one of the most moody, uh, hectic uh, terrain you'll ever see. It, it just flips. Beautiful skies and then... storm oh, wow. uh, we got marooned at 17,000 feet for eight days so What does that mean? we got stuck okay for eight days in a tent this table is bigger with three people in a tent and it was horrible like mentally that's what I was talking about that was one of the most difficult actual like physical emotional you'll be surprised the most emotional thing or my emotional mountain was to decide to be a, to be an adventure traveler That was one of the most difficult things because it wasn't really accepted at the time. And I'm so happy to say that I'm not alone. So many women now go and travel and explore. But when I started back then, it was not the norm. Um, so, yeah, when I say mountains, there's not the two types in my life. Tangible, intangible. So what is the So difference? something you can touch and something you can't. So okay. the ones that you can't is me choosing to be to be me. Oh, okay. So the challenges that you face emotionally on the mountain, potentially it's something that we, yeah. we're facing in our daily lives. Every day, every day. How do you mentally prepare for something like that? Because there's always going to be <sighs> obstacles that you're facing. So how do you actually plan for such occurrences? Look, you can plan as much as you want, but life always has a different idea. <laughs> always. Um, there's nothing you can do to prep yourself, but actually train. There's nothing you can do. Because you try to, you, you're going to try to, to, 
prepare for everything, but you don't, you can't imagine everything that's going to happen. So you try as much as you can to negate or reduce the amount of things that you might think would happen. So prep your body, prep your gear, prep your mind, you know, and then leave some space for the unknown and just be prepared for anything and try to have that attitude of as long as I don't die, it teaches me oh, because wow. it's horribly, horribly uncomfortable when you're climbing. And especially Denali, I had lost all my toenails. And my mom always tells me to say disclaimer. They came back pretty, actually. Because <laughs> my mother's like, disclaimer, she has toenails. So <laughs> the nails came back really pretty, all good. Is that, sorry, is that from frostbite? No, so it, there's multiple reasons why you can lose it. My reason was toe bang. There's something called toe bang. When you go downhill and you have a heavy backpack, you literally bang your toe into losing the nails. Oh <laughs> so that God. happened to me twice. That mountain hates my toenails. It took them twice. <laughs> so first time I went, all 10. Second time I went, all 10. But in my case, I'm very lucky. They came, back, they came back pretty. Pro tip, ladies and gentlemen, if you lose your nail, put it back on and tape it so that it doesn't damage the bed. But yeah, my nail. Thanks for that. My nail, my nail came back tip. nice and pretty because my mom is like, you won't have any suitors if they think you don't have nails. <laughs> like, I have nails. Just um, like they're back and they're gorgeous. They're back and they're pretty. They came back really pretty. Um, so yeah, that was very hard. Why would you tape your nails back? Because you really want to get into this. So if you lose your nail, there is a bed under it. If that bed is damaged, the nail after that will be damaged. Oh. So you have to protect the bed. So tape the nail back. So important. <laughs> Don't damage the bed because that's where the nail comes. That's, the, you know. Mm. Yeah. That's so the... mine came back nice. <laughs> nice and pretty. But yeah, it definitely. Thank God for that. It <laughs> teaches you so much. Like climbing teaches you so much. Such a sigh of relief for your mom. But this uh, mountaineering takes so much discipline. How did you instill that discipline within yourself? I love this question because it... it It's a fallacy. People are like, yeah, I'm so disciplined. Yes, I do have, I am a dis disciplined person by nature. Yes, I am. But discipline is like any other trait. You need to hone it. You need to teach yourself how to be disciplined. You won't, I won't just be disciplined and then that's it. No, like everything, like learning how to, to swim or learning how to do, a, you need to learn how to be disciplined. And it's such an important tool in your life. Discipline is everything and many people don't have discipline which is fine but it, in training and mountaineering it's essential and I thankfully had a good base for discipline and then I taught myself how to be disciplined how uh giving myself promises that I don't break promise yourself things not others not people nobody cares for yourself promise yourself and don't break them mm. because a lot of people yeah I want to do this and then they They just say, oh, I'll do it another time. You broke a promise to yourself. So teachers, treat, uh, treat yourself like a contract with someone. Don't break it. Yeah. You mentioned before that when you started, there was less women doing what you're doing. Yes. Um, and now there's more, which is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Have you noticed uh, kind of uh, any changes in representation of women in climbing since you started? Absolutely. I think I'm the only athlete that would say that there's so many people breaking my record and be happy. <laughs> I think I'm the only person who would be like, there's more Arab women, there's more Saudi women, because it's, uh, It, it is amazing for me not to be alone because when I started, I was the only one. Um, and now I'm not. So it's, I love it. And everyone's like, you're insane. I'm like, no, I'm happy because I shouldn't be the only one. I shouldn't be the only athlete. And not just that, families are more aware of what's happening. Like culturally, the, you know, there's a more understanding of women and sport. It used to be perceived as a very male dominated thing and a waste of time. Now, sports is perceived to be, first of all, a healthy option. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a career. You can be a professional athlete. It, it's, changed. it's not perceived to be male anymore. Um, last year, the Saudi Olympic Games were held in Saudi Arabia for the first time. And uh, both men and women had the same winning prizes. Oh, wow. I competed in That's beach great. volleyball and won. Oh! But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But just to show you, and I was one of the oldest people in, in competition, just goes to show you that if you have a chance and you have a love of a sport, then literally n nothing is impossible. Amazing. And that's great for representation of just like the country as well, right? And uh, I mean, yeah, of course, like it, it's such a significant thing to say, like uh, she's climbed the Everest, you know, like yeah. she's climbed mountains. Why can I not do this? 
why cannot like you know set small exam uh, small objectives and aims for yourself seeing that you've achieved so much so how do you feel like you know that a lot of people use you as just an example i get so model. humbled when i hear that because when i started mountaineering or, or climbing it wasn't i never imagined it would lead me here to sit and talk to you amazing people i never imagined it was just a, gr- a little girl's dream to be an adventure athlete kind of thing But now I'm so proud to say that so many women come up to me and men and say, oh, my daughter heard your story and, and, and did this because of you. When I was flying in recently, the, the, the host, the air host was like, you don't know me. You spoke at my school. He made me feel old a little bit, <laughs> but you spoke at my school. And because of you, I went and climbed Kilimanjaro and I was uh-huh. like in the, uh, in the goosebumps yeah. because mountaineering is, it's a bit of a selfish sport, but It's true. People, you don't want to admit it. It's true. It is a bit of a selfish sport because you take time and you're away and it's dangerous. It is. But once it becomes a message for all, it becomes a selfless one. And I love that I get to, to live this because, you know, you, you, you can do something and then it's just yours, which is amazing, but you do something and it's everyone else's. And then that's when it's so special. It's a legacy. It stops it becoming just, just like a thing you hang or a thing you sign or a record that you break. It's it's a legacy and this is my legacy. So I'm so proud to say that I'm not the only one. So many people are out there and it's an amazing era for us. And we're so proud of you. It's Thank an amazing you. era and it's growing, of course. But do you think women are facing unique challenges as they try and enter the sport? Absolutely. And I'm glad you mentioned this because I have something special. But um, yes, we still have, as far as we've come, we still have a, a lot to go because I think both men and women, maybe more women, because it's it's still... more male dominated it's still mm-hmm. there's still more male uh, just because classically it was a sport like most sports that was more male dominated but doesn't that doesn't mean well, we are less it means we have more to prove just now that's it doesn't mean that we can't doesn't mean that we're we're we just means that we're a little bit far from the fin- starting line than they are mm-hmm. but we're still in the game um so yeah there are a little bit of uh, difficulties it's hard to find sponsors it's hard to to get families approval it's hard sometimes to the gear is expensive it's it's hard you have to admit it like it is a difficult uh, sport in in most sports but especially technical sports it's not You know, that, that's why I, I, I always joke and I say that I'm a mountaineer. Uh, I'm known for being a mountaineer, but I play volleyball most of the time because it's cheaper. <laughs> it's like me, the ball, it's just going to be. But, um, <laughs> but it's, um, mountaineering is an expensive sport. But I think every single person, everyone, including you two, need to experience a adventure like that. Mm-hmm. You discover who you are. You discover a part of yourself you will never... You might absolutely hate it and call me and be like, Raha, you're insane. I hate you for suggesting this. <laughs> But being outside your comfort zone, there's magic. There's absolute magic in being outside of your comfort zone. I never knew I would be this person. I dreamt of being this person. I never knew that I would have a good aptitude to being a mountaineer. I never imagined that I, from Saudi Arabia, would be able to climb the seven summits. But because I went out of my comfort zone, I explored it. So every single person should. Speaking of every single person should, uh, we really want to know what you have coming up next and also the Adidas campaign that you're part of. I'm so excited to announce this. It's, it's, my, it's my baby. I've been dreaming of this for a long time. And thank you to my Adidas family for, for being an incredible sport in this. I decided because I had an amazing chance to go and climb uh, the, the highest mountains in the world. I wanted to invite someone to come with me. It's wow. it's a great opportunity. If you ever dreamt of doing this, please uh, keep an eye out for my account and the Adidas account because we will announce um, the mechanics of doing this. But I, I this is a call for all. If you ever dreamt of doing Everest Base Camp, if you ever dreamt of starting this journey, this is for you. I'm going back to celebrate my 10-year anniversary with Adidas and I want to have a companion and I'm opening it up to anyone. Wow. Whoever, whoever jumped of this, all you need to do is, is, is follow, follow, um, share with me why you would like to, to be part of this. Um, uh, uh, join the app uh, and just tell me, open up your heart and tell me why. Tag me and tag Adidas. Of course, I will put all of the details in there. I'm just really excited because... I looked back and thought, oh my God, if I had this opportunity when I started mountaineering, how much it would mean to me. So I wanted to give this chance to you. And of course, I called up Adidas. I'm like, hi, Adidas family. I have this crazy idea. And they were like, 
amazing. So, so you're going back to Everest Base I'm Camp going back and to, someone's going to go with you? Yes. Wow. To celebrate my 10-year anniversary. Again, don't remind me my age, but yes, to celebrate <laughs> my 10-year anniversary. And I wanted to, to make someone's dream come true like mine. Did That's amazing. Well. That is so incredible. And that it's going to be person. announced soon, yeah. So keep an eye out so that you can know all the details. And um, may, may, may uh, the best mountaineer or a lucky person get it. Join you. May the odds be ever in your favor. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But thank you so much. We just want to end this interview by you giving advice to like those who want to get into this mm. or like your 16-year-old self. What would you tell her when she was just starting out? So I would tell, okay, so I will start with my advice uh, to, to anyone and then I'll tell you what my advice to myself. They're different. My advice to anyone, uh, don't ever be afraid to, to fail. Don't ever be afraid to start something new. Most of us don't even start something because we're too afraid to fail. And failure is not shameful. Giving up is. But failing is just a rite of passage. It's just a, a, a like a, a tax you have to give life for you to get to where you want to go. So don't be afraid of failing. It means that you're trying something. I would rather fail a hundred times than not try at all. So don't be afraid of failing and try try something new and see what happens. Um, my advice to my younger self, besides wear sunblock, uh, <laughs> save money for 2020. Um, <laughs> Both solid piece of advice that I wish I'd, li- I wish I'd tell myself yeah. too. Yep. Uh, I would tell her to, 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 lo- to love who you are, to, to accept who you are. Um, all the things that people were making fun of you, pretty much all the things when you were little, are going to be in fashion. Big hair, big eyebrows, sharp features, and and an unconventional body. That will come in fashion, my dear. Don't ever do that. Don't ever make your eyebrows skinny. Love who you are in order for the world to love you. And don't ever be a cheap copy of someone else. Be the most original, authentic version of who you are. <laughs> I mean it. I'm we so are good. so grateful for your time this morning on International Women's Day My to have pleasure. an inspiration like yourself on the show. You have no idea. So thank you so much for your time. Anytime. Thank you. I still want to do the field stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, set it up from Ever Space Camp. We are all about it. More than welcome. Thank Please you for having me. It's such a special day.